Okay, today we're going to be talking about wiring in, in a car and the importance of wiring. And you may wonder, you know, why, why would I use a thicker wire when I can just use a thinner wire? Well, depending on the application, you can't just use whatever wire you feel like using. You have to use a wire that would be safe and appropriate for your car. The thicker the wire, the lower the gauge number it is. Um, and the thinner the wire, the higher the gauge number it is. So when you're wiring up a, uh, an accessory in your car, whether it be fog lights or a winch, stereo system, something like that, you need to find out what kind of uh, power it takes. Power can either be represented in amps, which is current, or watts, which is uh, uh, power. And uh, what's nice is if you go on Google and you type in uh, wire, wire gauge chart for automotive or for cars or whatever, you can come up with something like this. This one's kind of nice because you don't have to do much math to figure it out. If you know you're putting in a 300 watt uh, light bulb, uh, fog lights or whatever, driving lamps, or if it tells you it's a 25 amp winch or something like that, you can see if I'm only running this thing two feet that I would need a 14 gauge wire. But as the further you get away, let's say we go to 16 feet, so we're running it from the front of the car to the back, that, that wire now becomes an eight gauge wire. Pretty simple, 16 feet, 25 amps, it tells you eight gauge. This, this you can find, there's all kinds of different charts on the internet to use, and they're very helpful. Um, so if you don't find a chart like that, finding out what kind of power you have, it's a simple formula where P is watts or power, I is current or amps, so you will see it as uh, A typically, and uh, E is your voltage. So let's just say we had a 120 watt light that we wanted to put in there. Uh, we know that it's 12 volts, so that's our 120 divided by 12. So it's 12 divided by 120 equals 10 amps. And then that way, if we had a chart that just said 10 amps, we know we're running a 10 amp thing, we would go across and we'd, we would look, you know, let's say we're running uh, 12 feet, we'd know we'd need a 14 gauge wire. Conversely, if you knew the current, you could do I times E, and then that would give you your power. And if you had a chart that just had the power, then you would you would find your, the wattage that it says, say for instance 120, and then you'd go across however length it is. The longer the wire is, the more resistance in. So that's why you need to upsize your wire the longer you go, because the increased resistance will uh, uh, need, require you to have a longer wire. Okay, so now that we know we need a specific amperage according to this chart over here, we need to put in the appropriate fuse for the wire that you have. If you look on the, the typical wire uh, type of fuses we have, it'll say this, the style of, uh, or the amperage that it's required. Uh, this is a three amp here on the right and a 15 on the left. And if you'll notice, I don't know if you can see that, the actual wire, the fuse, is thinner on the, on the lower current device, which would make sense. So this will pop much quicker than this one. And it's important to put in the right size fuse. We'll demonstrate that later. The other thing you need to consider is uh, if you know you're running, say, a uh, 20 amp device, your switch is typically not rated up to 20 amps. This one here, I think, is rated at 6 amps. So how do you turn on and off the device that you want? Well, you have to use a relay. And uh, I'll go over in another video on how to wire up a, uh, a relay. But essentially, this is an electric switch. So when you flip this, it energizes a coil in here. It closes a set of contacts or can open them, depending on what you want. And it allows a higher current across those contacts that are being thrown than in this switch could handle. And uh, you don't want to burn up your wires. You don't want to melt your switch. You know, if you wire this straight to this wire and think you're going to be going, you're not. This switch will melt. It cannot handle the amount of current that would go through this and it cause the contacts in here to melt and quite possibly cause a fire. Okay, so what I did is I hooked up the battery 
Uh, I have the ground going to pretend this is uh, the metal chassis of the car. Yes, it's just duct work that I had laying around. I'm just trying to do this for demonstration purposes. So the negative goes to the chassis, just like in a car, and then your positive goes to uh, your device that you want to run, just like in a car. So now we, uh, let's just pretend we, this is uh, symbolizing your driving lights, fog lights, or any device that you want to run. You would uh, obviously put your positive to there and your ground to there, and you can see that the light works. Um, the importance of fusing. So when you have a fuse, you want to have it as close to the power source as possible. This would normally be a fuse box or possibly uh, a battery terminal. You put on the appropriate terminal, make sure it's secure, etc. Um, so anyhow, we're just simulating that this is the fuse box. Here's my fuse uh, going out to my device. Now let's just say that either this power was uh, too great or we accidentally abraded the wire and a feed through in the metal and we shorted it out. You'll see that there will be a spark here at the device where uh, the wire where it sparks or shorts out to the metal and you'll actually see the fuse flash. Oh crap. Sorry, that was a bad fuse. We already demonstrated that. <laughs> Okay, here we go. And you can see this wire is actually welded to it. I had to pull it off and it blew the fuse. But the important thing is, is this wire is all intact. It worked as it's supposed to. It protected the wire from catching on fire. If you had a huge bundle of wires, 20, 30 wires in here after you just did your nice restore, and for some reason that shorted out, this wire will catch on fire and it'll short out all the other wires and it'll just cause a huge fire and that's when you sell your car. Okay, so now I'm gonna demonstrate uh, what happens if you don't properly fuse your wire and if you can see, there's a hole right here. Uh, there's a hole right here and that's, let's say that's a firewall in your car that you just finished restoring and you did a really nice wire job on it. But this time, we don't have a fuse going to it. It's just straight wire. So instead of the fuse blowing, this wire will act as a fuse. And you will see it um, catch on fire and glow. What I did was I stripped a small section out. And then when it touches this, as you can see, it's still grounded. And I have a much larger gauge wire here, so the battery will be protected. But anyhow, um, once this touches that metal and there's no fuse to pop, you'll see what will happen. So I'm going to just bring it through, and then what I'll do is I'll touch it against that, and you can see it wasn't quite as dramatic as I thought, but uh, the wire just cut there. If this was a larger wire, such as one of these wires here, um, it would sit there and this wire would get hot, glowing hot, create insulation, melt down. This would then melt the wire that's next to it. That wire would insulate, melt down, and you'd have a big cookout. The, uh, the good thing about this wire is it was so thin of gauge that it just it snapped in half and it was not, a, not as dramatic as uh, I would have liked. So that's the importance. So that's the importance of uh, fusing a wire, choosing the right size wire, using the right size fuse, using the appropriate switch. If the switch doesn't have enough current for it, you need to use a relay. And then we'll go over the uh, importance of Obviously, you saw why we need to have grommets, and so we'll go over that next, how to run wires. Okay, I'm actually going to try a larger diameter wire uh, to see, maybe we can see a little bit more action. Again, this is a stripped wire. Uh, the metal's grounded, and then we'll just bring it across. Oh, crap. That was nice. <laughs> Yeehaw. And then now we got a short. Now you can see the actual fire, and that's not something you want to have in your car. You can see the damage it did to the metal. It actually welded. If you can see that, it actually did a weld as if we were welding, and then you can see the smoke here. If you look at the wire itself, it's actually welded to, it's stuck on and welded to the metal. 
Now if you had even a larger gauge wire, can, you can imagine how much damage that could be because it basically comes down to how long is this going to act like a fuse before it's separated. A larger wire, such as this, it's going to sit there and burn even longer and longer before it actually separates and disconnects it from the battery. So there again, here's another example of why you need to make sure that you have proper fusing and proper wire routing. You know, even if you have this fuse, you don't want to have this going on. Yeah, the fuse will pop, but now you've got to figure out why the fuse keeps popping. And so it's best to run it properly, make sure you have it uh, uh, fused properly, and etc. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the importance of, or exactly how to run grommets and stuff like that. I use a uh, step drill. If you see, these are different steps. And depending on how deep I go is how big the hole is. Um, the thing about this is, now this is just chintzy uh, ducting sheet metal that you'd use in your heat ducts at home or air conditioning ducts. And I drilled a hole. Now the important thing is, and this is going to be exaggerated on your car, from your car, your car won't be as bad. But if you see, when you look here, that it's really jagged. So you don't want to leave something like that. So what you would do is you go on the back side, if you can, and clean it up. Clean it up. You can either use the drill to clean it up, see how that's much cleaner. There's still some tags here. Use a file or something like that to, uh, to get rid of all that debris. Then once you've done that, your, your surface is painted to protect you. And so I just use any color, or it's up to you, You'll want to uh, go around and touch it up with some touch-up paint so that you don't get rust build up here. Now, the important thing is to protect that wire, you're going to want to use a rubber grommet. And uh, they come in all different kinds. I'm kind of a pack rat. Whenever I get a car that I'm uh, parting out or whatever, I'll steal the old grommets off the old car. These grommets aren't so good. Uh, this is a good grommet here. And if you look, if you can see, there's like a step in here so that you want to drill that hole smaller than the diameter of this cone right here so that it, when it pops in, it goes through and sticks in that groove. And then you want to make sure that this is pulled all the way through. Now you can put your hole in here and then run your wires through. The problem with these kinds of wires, or grommets, excuse me, is that if you put a wire in here, that's great. It protects it. It won't cut on the metal edge around here. But now you have a gaping hole here, and that's not good because you're going to either uh, allow water in here, mud, dust, or worse, fire. Uh, the reason why they call the, the front of the, or the back of the engine compartment the firewall is to protect the fire from getting into the passenger compartment, thus the name firewall. So you want to make sure that these, these kinds of holes aren't left open so that fire can actually get in through there and then cause a fire on the inside. And worse yet, uh, you get water in there. Maybe even a little mouse might come in and visit for the winter. Okay, so you want to run a wire from the uh, engine compartment to the through the firewall and into the passenger compartment for your lights or whatever reason. Uh, you, what you want to do, you'll look along the firewall and you'll see... Uh, rubber grommets. Uh, typically you'll see wires going through, maybe you won't. Um, this is a wire grommet right here, um, rubber grommet uh, right here. Uh, you can see I've got, uh, there's an EGT line going through and there's also a CNG uh, gauge going through there. Uh, you want to have it kind of as close to the middle of the uh, grommet as you can for the most protection. When you're running a wire through there, it's kind of a pain. If it's a new grommet, maybe what you want to do is poke it with uh, an awl or something sharp. Make sure you watch where you're poking. You want to spear a wire or anything on the other side. And then you can take either uh, what I have is this, uh, it's actually the inside of a power antenna. It's like a nylon flexible thing. But you can also use a zip tie or something like that. You would stick that in there. Then you could tape... You can tape your wire to the zip tie, and then uh, you would gently pull it through 
once you have it, you know, obviously this is, this is inside. Now I'm pulling my wire out, and I just pull it out like that. So you, you spear this in because it's a little more rigid. It might be a little easier to uh, do. Uh, sometimes it helps to uh, spray the uh, grommet with some silicone or WD-40 or something like that to lubricate it to help the pull easier. Just be careful when you're pulling the wire out that the grommet doesn't come out. It's fine if it comes out, but when you're done, make sure you reset it back in so that it's actually doing protection. It doesn't do any good if the grommet's pulled back and it's just sitting there flopping around. You're four-wheeling in the middle of the desert and you get your nice little fire going. Not the kind of uh, marshmallow fire, but a good engine fire that leaves you stranded. Uh, and that's it. The last thing I'd like to say is um, they make spy wrap. Uh, not spy wrap, but this, this kind of stuff here. This is actually a uh, factory here, and it's protection. So you put your wire in here. just makes it look more professional. Uh, you put this in, wrap your uh, tape around it. But if you don't have the uh, access to that or you don't want to spend the money, just use some tape. You can see how the, this is a whole bunch of wires. They just wrapped it in tape. They continued in tape down here. This is all factory. Uh, you just want to make it look factory as you can. Follow the factory routings. Don't banjo things. Don't have tight lines where it's pulling or rubbing against something where it could uh, cause it to short out or break or whatever. Uh, make sure you zip tie it, secure it properly. You don't want to have the wire sitting there vibrating a lot and, um, you know, create problems there. Thank you.